Okay, so Thanks. welcome, Ed. Very good. Welcome, everybody. We thank the Lord for another Monday night. And without delay at this point, we're going to jump on in. Sister Vesper has a scripture, and then she's going to open us in prayer. And tonight is another night of Thanksgiving. We, you know, we share the testimony that we'll share, have Sister Vesper um, after she reads the scripture and um, pray that she could um, share her testimony for those who are getting this recording. And then we're going to pray around that, a Thanksgiving praise. All right, Amen. take it away, Sister Vespa. Amen, praise God. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Lord. Praise ye the Lord. This is Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in, in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him for his excellent greatness. Praise mm -hmm. him with the sound of trumpets. Praise him with the psalms and harps. Praise him with the timbrels and dance. Praise him with string instrument and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Pray, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has praise breath him. praise the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. Praise, praise your own little name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Thank you, Father Jesus. God, I just love you and I give you praise and I give you thanks for preserving me, for bringing me back so I can be here one more Monday, so I can share my testimony with my sisters and brothers. Father God, I know your love. I've known your love for a long time. And sometimes I have to wonder how much you love me when I didn't even know. Well, you have something burning? Then I didn't even know that you loved me so much. And I thank you for preserving me last Thursday night in New York. I thank you, God, for your angels that you sent over us to guide and to protect us. I thank you for each one here today. I thank you for your love for each of us, that you have protected us. You have guided Amen. us. You'll be with our families. You'll you be with Brother Joel as he travels. You're giving him traveling mercies. You're sending his, your angels to watch over him. You're watching over Sister Beverly, Sister Alice, Sister Valerie, Sister um, Sandra, Sister D and all the sisters who are here, you, you, you love us and you're bringing us together as a, as a group, as a crew. We are what you call prior warriors because we are learning about your words and learning yes, more yes. about you, Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you and we give you love and mercies. We thank you. I'll tell you what happened to me um, who, for who wasn't here. I went to New York to visit my brother and I over injected myself with my insulin. And I was unresponsive when the ambulance came. I was out for maybe three or four hours. I didn't know. And I ended up in the hospital because um, I was, you know, because I, I, I did something stupid. But God, when we do things stupid, God is always there to, to help to bring us out of it. So I just want to give thanks. That's why Psalms 51 was my song. So praise tonight. Just giving thanks in glory to God for his love and mercies. So, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Amen. Well, we, we join you in lifting up a praise tonight. So the floor is open for anybody that wants to lift up a praise. That's where we're starting tonight. We're going to lift up a praise to God. Not just for, um, we're grateful that Sister Vesper, Vesper is here with us, even for what she's been through and then finding her on the floor. She's with us tonight, alive and well, and we give God praise. And mm -hmm. so let's lift up a praise offering to him tonight. I'm going to go with Sister Alice. Lead us in. If you would, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We Hallelujah. praise you, God. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Almighty Father, we thank you for this testimony. We yes, thank you. Yeah. Two weeks that separated us fell your absence. We needed you, oh Lord. We needed each other. And Father, we are back here today with results, good reports from you. Good reports from you never sleeping or never going into slumber yes, yes. all the time. Thank you for the gentle reminder for our sister Vespa to be more vigilant, to, to seek you in times of need in times of worry and to know that it's not by checking and checking her blood sugar that she will do it 
to know that you have covered her with your blood. You have blessed yeah. her with life that she lives. And that when we are tired, we just rest and know that you are in control. I yes, thank you, Lord, for her joy and her happiness. The yes, fact God. that she is here, Lord, is testimony, is proof that we yeah. might the enemy might do something to us, but we will still be here by your grace. Yes. Father, for keeping her, for keeping her family safe and secure, for bringing Thank her you, Lord. To, Europe, to here back home to us. I bless you and magnify you for many others that are still coming. I also bless you for my family, oh Lord, for so much that is going. I lost a very, very good friend of mine who died suddenly. It's mm. a, everybody is gathering courage to talk about this, to be able to make plans for her final right father you are in control hold us, Jesus. hold us together give us grace give us your peace to understand mm. times we just don't understand but your work it's your decision it's your call that it's, nobody yes. could gladys but you call her home i thank you lord i bless you also lord that i had a leg pain for like one week, I couldn't put my leg down. But yesterday, I wore shoes. I went to church. I bless your name. I know it's Thank healed. You, Jesus. Healed. I don't know, even stronger than it was before. This mm. leg has kept me from walking, my normal morning walks. But I know, Lord, that tomorrow, you will take me out of my bed, ready to go for a walk. I bless you. Thank you. This night, for my sisters and friends that we are meeting here, in today father you are awesome father you are great mm. say that yes yeah say that you are present that when two or three are gathered in your name you are present with them father oh, yes. us, watch over us teach us bless us as we go into our monday night of study in the mighty name of jesus i have prayed amen 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Remind me, Sister Vesper, you said it is Psalms 51 or 151? No, 150. 150. 150. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I, I just love the lyrics of this, this short chorus, and I'm just, I'm not going to sing it, but I'll just say it. And how appropriate when I think of um, Sister Vesper's testimony tonight. The words say, For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted. We exalt you, God, tonight. For thou art exalted far above all gods. For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. We exalt you, we exalt you, we exalt thee, O Lord. We exalt thee, we exalt thee. We exalt thee, O Lord. And as I listen to her testimony, we are exalting God for your preservation, Sister Vesper. Yes, and that's Lord. why we're pausing. And that's why we pause every Monday night. To say thank you father we just honor your presence that is so rich with us tonight we exalt you god because you're high above every situation everything that we can face god you're in charge and so we bless you you are worthy god of our praise tonight god we come before you as empty vessels Jesus. Jesus. Search our hearts. Jesus. Cleanse us, oh God. Father, forgive us of anything that we've done that's not pleasing to you. And as we come tonight, open and ready, Father, we are receiving so much. We are learning, and dear God, we're digging in. And Father, we pray that you'll open our understanding, bring clarity to our hearts and minds. We pray for others that are coming. Uh, we had a new sister a couple of weeks ago. Shelly Ann is her name. Father, we pray that for those that are coming in for the first time and, you know, just listen to Sister Angeline and how things are being cleared up for her. God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for Brother Joel and yeah. God availing himself to just come among us, oh God, and open up the word in, in this way to us, making it so clear yeah. and <laughs> 
simplify it to us, God. We just praise you and we extol you tonight. We we give you praise, honor, and glory, God, because you're worthy. There's yes. none like you. There's none to be compared with you. Father, no. we're there when we fall, when we stumble, when we slip. God, you're there to pick us up and we, we just praise your name tonight. Have your way with us. We pray for those yet to come. God, we pray that you'll Oh, God, hasten their footsteps. Some are coming in from work. Some are, you know, tending to families. Father, we just bless each and every person that takes the time out to come and be with us as we fellowship this way. What a God you are that even in this season, God, you this avenue is open for us to just gather. We can still see each other, though not physically, but we're seeing each other. We're communicating. And God, yeah. we, as Sister... Um, Alice said, we missed each other last week. God, we just thank you for the fam sense of family and love that's among us. God, it's only because of your grace, thank only because of your mercy. We offer you thanks. Yes. Bless every woman, their family, their children. God, kids are back out at school. And Father, we know that the devil is busy. He comes with aim to kill steal and destroy but father we plead the blood of jesus over the lives of our children as they go out and they face uh the, the this world god we pray that you'll cover them a hedge of protection god jesus. around them we pray for hearts and minds of teachers oh god that they're there to do what they're called and they've chosen as their path to to do god to teach these children father we pray god that They'll do it according to um, mandated rules, but God use uh, the heart of God to direct the lives of these children and not to rob and steal from them any other kind of way. God, have your way tonight. We just bless you and we thank you. Strengthen our bodies. The Sister um, Alice mentioned her needs, God. We pray for complete healing in the name of Jesus. Her needs, my needs, and needs and any other ailments that's among us. God, you pay the price. It's okay. paid in full. Our healing is paid. Okay. And so we offer you a thanksgiving for all that you've done for us, paid in full at the cross. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name, God. There's none like you, a father that loves his yeah. children. Okay. We thank you, Jesus. Come have your way with us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I'm on my phone. I can't see anybody else. I think her sister uh, Beverly's here. Uh, go ahead, yeah. Sister Beverly. Let's have a praise with us. Father God, we give you thanks tonight. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. And we worship you, God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are the strength of our lives. Mm. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are our salvation, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for your covering upon us, dear God. Thank you for your grace, Lord, and your mercies, dear God. I pray, Lord, that your, your grace, God, would be upon us, Lord. You give us grace, Lord, to continue, Lord, daily. Father God, mm. all, that we, all that we have to do, God, as we... Lord, as we read your word, as we give us the grace, Lord, to study your word, God, to, mm. to pray, Father, Lord, as to continue, Lord, in all that we do, dear God. I thank you thank for your you. mercies, oh God, upon our lives, oh God, for keeping us, Lord. Thank you, God, for being our healer, Lord, mm. in our body, Lord God, it's by your stripes we are healed. Yes. Father God, in our in our spirit, in our souls, in our in our bodies, oh God. Yes. Father God, we bless your name tonight. Yes. We yes. thank you, God, for our families, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for salvation, oh God. We thank you, dear God, for your protection, oh God, upon yes, us. God. Upon us, oh God. Upon us, Lord, as we go. Father, for each one of us here tonight, God, as we get in our cars and, and we drive to go and to come, Lord, as we get on Cover the skin, Father, and as we travel back and forth, Lord God, you are with us, Lord God. Thank you for mm. covering us. Thank you, Lord, for your protection upon us. Thank you. Father. Lord, thank you for keeping us, oh God. Lord, thank you for protecting us, God, from all evil, Father God. We thank mm. you, Lord. 
We give you praise tonight, oh God, as we look into your word tonight, God. I pray, Lord, that you would touch our, our, our hearts tonight, Lord, our minds. Help us, Lord God, to give us understanding of your word, Father God. I pray, Lord, that our minds, Lord, will not will not move away, oh God, from your word tonight, mm. God, but you would keep us, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit. Father God, we thank you, Lord, and we bless thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Your name, Dr. Love. Welcome, Dr. Love. We're lifting up a praise. We're lifting up a praise. And for those that are coming on, Sister Vesper read from Psalms 150. And how rightfully so, because her testimony um, is worthy of praises to God. You could, it could have been a different story, and she's laid up oh. in a hospital, or we could have been going to a funeral, but we mm -hmm. praise God. Psalms 150, we praise God that yes. Sister Vesper is with us. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Uh -huh. Any other testimonies or anybody else want to lift up a praise, please do so before we transition. Well, I think I just got a message. I can't see it because I'm on my phone tonight. Um, but I believe Sister Christiana is saying she cannot do communion. I can't see that message. So if anybody's on WhatsApp, let me know if that's what she said. Um, but we'll proceed anyway. We'll proceed. <laughs> She only did it Someone. to you. I'm sorry. No, I said she only did it to you because I don't oh, see. Okay, it. okay, all right, all right. Thank you. But well, she was supposed to do communion, so we'll just we'll just let the leading of the spirit lead us yeah. accordingly. Um, well, we are not going to delay. We just want to go into the word. Um, we've missed um, not being here last week due to the holiday. And there's another one coming up again um, in October. It's another holiday that we'll miss. Um, while we're at it, I just want to say that we had been talking about getting some time to fellowship together um, for those of us here in Boston. And um, I just spoke to Sister Val again today. And we are going to change the date to that long weekend in October. So I'm not near my calendar, but there's a long weekend in October. So we want to get from you whether the Saturday, because it's a long weekend. So some folks may be traveling. If you're not traveling, we want to get a vote on whether people wants to meet on the Saturday or the Sunday. And it'll be at the Webb's home. And Sister Val said that they're okay with either dates, but we want to have the majority of the people with us. Um, so we want to use the date that every, most people will be here. So I don't know if anybody's had a calendar, but whatever that long weekend is. So, so it's that 10-10. That so it's the 8th, it would be the, uh, so the, it would be the Saturday. The Saturday or the Sunday. So, so the we want to. Saturday, so the ninth would be the, the Sunday. Okay. So, so what we're asking is that you send us a text, um, which you prefer. I and we're going to go, go with the majority. It's the ninth, huh? Yeah. Go ahead, Alan. I will not be here. I'm going for the long weekend. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's what we were thinking. Some people may be traveling. Traveling, yeah. Yeah which was happening, you know, this day yeah. coming up. So yeah. whoever comes, comes, we'll just want to, we haven't seen each other in a long time and it's just a time for us to come together and fellowship together, have some laughter, have some food and yeah. fellowship together. Okay. All right, so be thinking about that. Um, let's transition now. Um, and so Brother Joel, it's in your hand, but can I please open with a question? On mute. Can I open with a question? You most certainly can. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for this time. 
Um, there was something you said on the 29th in my notes. You said, our desires come from God. But further down, you said, um, all desires come from God and they are good. So what if it's something that we're desire? And again, you said all desires come from God. What if it's a desire that does not line up with according to his will and his word for us? And then if it, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, it didn't come from God. Think about it. God says that he gives us the desires of our hearts, right? Oh, yeah, that was the word, yeah. And if God is going to give us what he desires for us to have, they have to be the best things in the world. God has no desire for us that is not good. And if we have a desire that does not line up with the word of God, it is not coming from God. And if we are trying to execute a desire that's not coming from God, I'll give you an idea how we would end up. First, we would end up like Adam and Eve mm. because they executed a desire that was in opposition to what God desired for them. God's desire, God's desire for them is that they had, they would live forever. Mm -hmm. right that they would live forever without a single problem that was the desire for them yeah his desire is the same where we read in the scriptures i think it's peter say i wish above all things that you do what prosper prosper mm -hmm. and be in good health mm -hmm. even as your soul so prospers so if we're going to have a desire that is going to affect the prosperity of our souls mm -hmm. it is going to diminish who we are based on who god says we are so let's bring it right here to high park so a mm -hmm. person oh my gosh i want this job it's going to be a good paying job and I want this job, I want this job, I want this job. Nothing gonna get in my way to get this job. I want this job. And into the natural person, oh man, you're looking for a prestigious job, it's gonna be a job. But if that's not God's desire, then you can go on that job and hence have problems. Is that how I'm hearing it? Well, see, let's come back to the foundation scripture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it gives us the desires yes. our heart right mm -hmm. okay so if we have a relationship with god where we're fellowshipping with god mm -hmm. where his word his word is our direction and our guide right he's, he started there's several scriptures that talk about god's desire now he doesn't desire that any of us perish but that everyone comes to repentance mm -hmm. but everyone does not come to repentance everyone does not come, but that is his desire right so in order for us to come to repentance we have to accept his desire for us to come to repentance. Okay, you talk about a job, right? Oh, now, we know that, that everybody, everybody needs a job. Everybody needs a job, mm -hmm. right? To support and sustain them. So if you are looking for a job, right? You're talking about somebody who's looking for a job or somebody who's trying to get a promotion, or whatever it is. Now, whatever we're doing, it is so important that we talk it over with our daddy, our father <laughs> God. Yeah. Right? And let him know what we're trying to accomplish. And if we are serious in terms of 
our conversation with our father, he is going to direct our path. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says, whatsoever things you desire when right. you pray, mm -hmm. what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? Let's deal with this desire here while we have desire. What's the only thing we desire when we pray? What are we supposed to do? Believe. Believe that you receive. What did you receive it? And with Believe that, that what? Believe that what did you receive it? And Stop right there. <laughs> Whatsoever yes, things you desire when? When you pray. pray. When you pray. Pray. Yeah. Okay. Is it, 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 it believe that you receive it already and you will have it? Okay. Yeah, already. Yeah. So, right. So, 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 what time do you receive what you pray for? When you pray. When you pray. When, when you, you pray. You pray. Mm -hmm. When with you with pray is when belief. you receive what you pray for. With belief. Now, if you're telling me that you believe that you have received what you pray for when you pray based on the instruction from the word of god why do you go back and pray for it again again oh that's good that's good stuff let's 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 this a little bit. because it doesn't show up and so you think you need to do it again again and again and that's again that's how we were yeah. taught how we were taught to pray he prayed right. until something happens Okay, so so so, so 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 understand how understand now that if we are to believe that we receive it when we pray, yeah. right? Okay. And instead of being thankful, right? Instead of instead of acting as though we have received what we prayed for, because it has not manifested yet mm, in the that's natural. The that's the key right there. It has not manifested yet in the natural. That's but it right says, if you believe that you receive it, you have it. When you pray, not after you pray, not before you pray, but when you pray, if you believe that you receive it, you have to believe that you have received it. If you believe yeah. that you receive something, why are you going to ask again? For the same thing the only reason why we do that is because in the first place we did not believe that we receive it mm, that's good that's good that's good breakdown right there so if we believe that we receive something what is the what is the first what is the first action what what action do you take when you believe that you receive something you uh, thank the thanks, person, the giver. Thanks, Give thanks. Yes. You thank the yes. giver. Who, you know, Psalms 150. Person. Yes, sir. Yeah, you thank yeah. your prayer. No, it's not Psalms 150. What Give do thanks. we do when we believe that we receive something? What do we do? Give thanks. We give, thanks. 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 Yeah, thanks. we give thanks. Thanks. We give thanks. Yes. We give thanks. thanks. The moment we give thanks, what happens is that it says, to every opposing force mm, uh -huh. that would try to stop us from receiving what we have received spiritually uh -huh. is put on notice mm -mm. that I have received it. It is the very reason why I'm giving thanks Give and I'm thanks. Not going back to pray and ask for it. The adversary will try to get you, right? To abandon what you believe you receive, to start mm. again to ask for what you believe you receive, and you spend all of your life asking, mm -hmm. going around in circles, mm. Jesus, asking, mm -hmm. and it is not going to work because the scripture says, "Whatsoever we desire when we pray for a job, for our mm -hmm. health, for whatever it is, believe, believe. that you receive it." Amen. If you believe that you receive it, the scripture says you are going to have it. He didn't say when you are going to have it. He didn't mm -hmm. say you were going to have it in 10 hours. He didn't say you were going to have it instantaneously. Mm -hmm. And when he says that you're going to have it, he's talking about you having it in reality so that you yes. can see it, touch it, smell it, taste it, whatever it is. Mm. It's good. So we need to ask right 
ask and we believe that we receive that it has been given to Thank us. Thank you, Lord. And we spend every moment of Thank our you, life Lord. thereafter giving Thank thanks you. and praise to God for what he has given us until it manifests in the natural we have to begin to learn to pray with the understanding that when we pray it is the time that we believe that we receive it okay. I so the, big, the, the big problem is that we believe in our heads we give yeah. mental assent to it but we really don't believe okay. But Go ahead, uh, but past, uh, sister, my question was kind of, I think this is the, the, the whoever that desire didn't even go to ask God about that desire or present it to the daddy and say, okay, daddy, I'm looking for this job, you know, which, you know, please direct me or lead me in that section or whatever you want from me or getting mm. married. But it doesn't really matter whether it's a home, homeless person, whoever mm. it is, bring it to me. Okay, yeah. we just run ahead and go do whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's where there was the kind of disjointed because you mm -hmm. didn't go to him in the first place. So it's your desire. He'll allow you to get it. You know, then you come back again and hit the road bump and come back and start crying back again. So we have to run it to him for that's a way, you know, God talk to each other, you know, maybe from the world, from you, you know, that's a way all of us were unique. When you pray, that's the way. Mm -hmm. If you see panicking and jittering, it's not. When you get it, you know, you have that peace in you that, uh, uh, yes. that's it. So we're all different and you could sense it. Yeah. But it is only going to work one yeah. way. One way. Yeah. When you pray, believe that yeah. you will receive it and you will have it. That's it. That is what the word is saying. That's the instruction from the word. Mm. And if you believe that you receive it, we understand that from here on in, what you're going to be doing is giving thanks and praise and worship. Forget about what you see with your eyes. Forget about what you feel with, with your senses. And again, Just it goes back. believe that you have received it when you pray. It goes back to what some of us have been saying. This is the best man said that when I said it some time ago, um, we have to break away from what we were taught. What we were taught is, tarry till it come yes right that's what we thought so we, we all of that now we we, we dump that let's that's take right. that let's take that that's to the right. garbage bin that's right that's okay right. okay i think I, let's now that something came up now but i, I don't want to mention any like uh as uh sister val said oftentimes oh we, for example let's pray for like earthquake going on in i, I won't mention any country you know earthquake we pray every day we keep on praying for the same earthquake going on so we're after what you've said now so is it meaning that we just praying in doubting because we already pray once every day we keep on we can pray for the same earthquake not taking place in that particular area so you know or maybe a prayer should shift of thanking lord that you're taking care of the earthquake as the, as we were we just analyze it now well you make a prayer yeah right and the bible says if if the condition is if the only mm -hmm. how you're going to receive it is if when you pray you believe that you receive mm -hmm. it you can't see it mm -hmm. faith is the substance of things not seen you can't mm -hmm. see it but you said it. And we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about that tonight because okay. we, we 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 um we see so many things going awry, even in our own physical bodies. <laughs> when that should really not be that way, but we we have we have to come to that understanding. And, and 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 implementation of the word right for instance we look at medical science and we have a lot of respect for them right mm -mm. medical science tell us that there are many incurable diseases many we got all kinds of different forms of cancer 
got arthritis, we got heart disease, and we got a whole bunch of diseases that are not curable. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Not curable. And even though there are no medical cures, right, for, for so many of these diseases, Sister Valerie, God's word is a super cure. Hmm. Yeah. And it offers is and it offers supernatural hope to everybody who's afflicted, whether you're on this line or not. Hmm. That is what the yeah. word of God does. Right? So remember what we were saying just, just a little while ago. Whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it and you will have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Bible is the manufacturer's handbook who is the manufacturer jesus uh, the father uh, uh, jesus, jesus and the holy spirit uh, jesus and the holy spirit <laughs> the bible is the manufacturer's handbook revealing how to take care of what god has made there mm. is no other manual yeah that's true. He made us in his image and he made us in his image and his likeness and his image is a spirit. So therefore, our spirit needs the word to be fed so that we can be close to our father because he said in his word that it is spirit and it is life for us. So if we take his word, it's like food to our bodies and to the spirit. So um, that's why he had his word written so that we could have it because Otherwise, exactly. we would not be able to have it. Mm. Yeah. And he searches all, he searches your spirit. It's not for your head, as it was saying. He searches our spirit, when we believe it or not. Yeah, it's it's deep. Mm. So 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 the book of Proverbs, right, Over. reveals some vital information concerning our health and our well-being and we, we really need to focus on that you know because god wants us to be healthy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and yes. wealthy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's true we're kingdom people mm -hmm. we are kingdom people the resources of the kingdom of heaven are at our disposal part of the problem sister vesper is that we give mental assent to the word mm -hmm. because we don't see all of this money in our hands in order to take care of a need we freak out mm -hmm. even though we have a word from god which says that he supplies all, all, all of our needs, needs according to his glory. riches and glory, riches and and glory. Is, is god lying or is, is he telling the truth mm. I, I, it's not lying. I, we I'm, we just haven't gotten it yet. We just haven't yeah. been fed mm -hmm. enough or taught enough because, as I said mm -hmm. before, we go to church, but the word is not being fed us. We are being taught what the pastors want you to hear. I mean, nothing against pastors. I love having my pastor and everything, but I just feel like you don't get the word when you go to church, even when they mm -hmm. open the book and read the word. You don't. I. I don't feel like he's explaining it to the congregation. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, like we're sitting here and dissecting the word, and we're getting it. But there's a lot of people out there who is not, because we were mm -hmm. all ignorant. And he's opening our eyes, you know. And as I keep saying, I'm you, happy God. that I got into this group because I'm learning. I've. I've been. I've been asking for wisdom because he says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. That he will give it uh, literally, and so I've. Mm -hmm. That's in the manual. That's yes. in the manual. That's in the manual. So, you know, yeah, it's in I'm the sorry, manual, but yeah. it's just that I just had to give him praise because it's like he's hoping me a lot of stuff. Like coming back this week and just thinking about him, he's opened my mind mm -hmm. to so much revelation in his work. Hallelujah! That, you know, that, Hallelujah. You know, okay. so, praise God! I mean, just Hallelujah! Mm. So, 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 so. <laughs> so so god's desire for us mm. is for everything good good yeah he paid the price for mm. us to have 
Yeah. Every <laughs> good and perfect gift. Mm. Now, Very Proverbs 4.20.22 4, says, 4.20-22 4, says, Four. My son, and it's talking about mm. my daughters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Attend to my, my words. words. Yeah. Yeah. Attend to my words. For wow. goodness sake, listen wow. to me. Yeah. Don't listen to anybody else. You know what happened to Adam and Eve when they hmm. listened to the devil. Don't Trouble. listen to anybody else. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. He's saying the same thing. Listen to what I'm saying to you. What mm. I am saying to you is life giving. Uh, yes, yes. I think, and and I you know to, to be, I don't know how I'm gonna put this because something happened to me relating to that, and we should be uh, careful what we watch or what we hear because yeah, it's very very important because anything that brings fear or creates a fear factor. In, in your you know it, it kind of really put you on rail miles back like today something happened my brother called oh i love you know i already plan to travel in december to go you know because to go some evangelism to help out with some of the some of the needy then i just say oh, i'm not gonna go because they say they kidnap it can you believe it god already put in my mind okay because i hear that I will, I said, I felt so bad. I said, I can't believe it. After being in this section every Monday, somebody, mm. my brother said, oh, put fear in me that, oh, you know, people are being kidnapped. Um, you know, see how I just went back. Uh, I just felt so bad. Jesus. I'm telling you. So you gotta be careful. How do, you know, what you hear, mm -hmm. there are too many enemy can bring all those words, you know, yeah. and just bring you like minus, you know, uh, I, I, well, he says we, be, Jesus definitely did want us to be careful what we mm -hmm. hear, and what yeah. we hear is important. But mm -hmm. what he went on to say mm -hmm. is this: that we will not necessarily have what we hear, but mm -hmm. we will have what we say. Say, say. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that is why Jesus, that is why the word of God is saying, my son, my daughter, attend to my words. Sure. Listen to my words. Pay attention to my words. He say, incline your ear unto <laughs> what I'm, unto <laughs> my saying. And he says, let them not depart from your eyes. <laughs> Have a vivid dis <laughs> understanding in your mind of what the word is saying. For instance, if I say that the dogs are barking, you ain't see no dog. But in your mind, you know what a dog is, and you know what a barking is. Well, it's the same thing. When you hear, when you hear my words, get a vision of what I'm saying. When I when my words say that by the stripes of Jesus I am healed, get a vision in your mind's eye. Yeah. that you are healed so if yeah. if if you if you if you're in the bed make every attempt to get up mm -hmm. he says let them not depart from your eyes yep. and he says to keep them in the midst of thine mm -hmm. heart amen for they are life life he says unto those who find them and and, mm -hmm. and not only life not only life and health to yep. all of their flesh. Yep. That yep. is what the scripture is saying. You know what the scripture is saying? Is that what we believe, what we believe, that's what the scripture is saying, you know, generally determines what happens in our life. You, you, yep. you, you, you remember what you just said, Sister Love? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Kidnappers. Yeah, that's that's terrible, you know. Jesus, <laughs> that's terrible. And by the way, the only how we know what we believe <laughs> is based on what we say, number one, and mm -hmm. what we act on, number two. Yep. Yeah, we say and act. So if you're just you saying alone, it. if you're just saying alone, no. 
and we have so this example it, that we use. You don't have to do anything with it. We have this example that we use all the time. The guy <laughs> is sitting hungry. <laughs> yes. And he's bought, he's brought a plate of food. And he <laughs> sits there and he says the right thing. Oh, if I were to eat this plate of food, I will not die. Mm -hmm. And he sits there every day and he says the right thing until he dies because he did not eat the food. That is what is happening in our, in our lives that we have to fix. Mm -hmm. So what we believe generally determines what happens in our lives, right? Because our words are actually building blocks that determine our life and they determine our future. And that is why God wants us to pay attention to his words because his words are the only words that can give us life and bring healing to our flesh. So our words, Sister Valerie, are the cornerstones of our life. And we live, we live within the confines of those boundaries that we create, you know, with our own words. See what Sister Love is saying? Sister Love dwell on that. Next thing you know, she decides, all right, let me go anyway. And, I'm, and, and next thing you know, she gets kidnapped, we don't see her again. <laughs> Mm. So, the, so, so those words cannot be part of the framing of our lives. That's a good word. So, so, so whether we are praying or having a normal conversation, it has to be the same thing. We can't be praying one thing mm -hmm. and then in our normal conversations we're saying something that is opposing yes. what we say. Contrary. Mm -hmm. oh every situation and circumstance in our life every one of them every condition that we encounter they're all subject to change mm. but with the support of our words we can establish them in our life forever if we say the wrong things continuously mm -hmm. remember it is a law it is a law it is the law of faith we have what we say. Remember, God was telling mm -hmm. Moses, the children of Israel talk in foolishness. Mm -hmm. They are on a journey to the promised land. Land, right. Where they are going to live in houses they didn't build, own lands they didn't buy, oh. eat, mm. from, eat from harvest food that they didn't plant. Jesus. And all they could have done was to speak in opposition to God's word. When God's word is telling them exactly what they're going to have. Hmm. God's word is telling them exactly what they're supposed to have. Isn't that something? Now, I'm going to share an article that you're going to find very, very interesting. There's an article entitled... <clears throat> patient, patient knows best. Actually, it was an article that was published in Reader's Digest way back in 1991, right? Way back in 1991, and 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 and, and, <laughs> and here are the the person's answer to the to the to the question, right? <laughs> and here's the question: Is your health excellent? Is it hmm. good? Is it fair? Or is it poor? Here, that is what the question is, you know. Mm -hmm. So this exit, this question, whether we believe it or not, is a remarkable predictor of who will live or die over the next several years, according to a, a few findings that 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 were that came about in this study. So that question was asked, right? And a mm -hmm. study of some 28, 2,800 men and women combined. They were old, 65 years and older, right? And they found that those who rate their health poor, those who rate their, rate their health poor, saying that they have poor health, 
are four times more likely to die in the next few years, next three, four years, than those who rate their health excellent. And this was a very serious study that was take, that took place. And this was the case, even if the examination showed persons responding to being comparable good health, based on what they say about their health, even though they were in good health, how they rated it had an outcome. So the findings are supported by a view of five other large studies that this, this group did. This is an article out of um, Reader's Digest. Now that study was expanded to 2,300 people. Are we going 23,000 people? Are we going someplace? Which reached similar conditions, right? So people who have an image of themselves being in poor health will talk about poor health. Watch what we're talking about. Because what we're talking about set the boundaries for our existence. So even though they may be in good health, but talking negatively about their health, the outcome can be, can be, can be catastrophic. So these people generally live out the reality of the image of themselves. Even under that. See, what we hear create images in our minds. Yep, yep, yep. The same thing has to do with what we say, because what we say we hear. Mm. What we say we hear. We hear other people speaking, but what we say, what we say we hear. So what we believe and speak not only affects our body, it affects our entire immune system as well. So our words. Our words become either a blessing or a curse to us. Mm -hmm. And that is why we read earlier that God is saying to listen to his words. Mm -hmm. Listen to my words. Pay attention to my words. Lean not to the understanding of anybody else, not even yourself. Amen. Because that is where we are having serious issues. So there is probably no other truth more important to healing and health. Right? Than these verses admonishing us to keep God's word in our hearts. So the question here is for our discussion at this very moment is how do we know? How do we know when God's word is in our hearts? How do we know when God's word is in our hearts? When we hear ourselves speaking it. Amen. And acting, Amen. And acting it too. <laughs> and acting on it. So this, this one principle could be the key to us being a partaker of God's provisions mm -hmm. concerning our health. And I want us to zero in this evening on that aspect of our lives. Right? And it is calling things that are not. It's the principle. And it was the same principle by which Brother Abraham became persuaded. He wasn't lying. He was calling things that are not as though they were. That is a principle. And that is why God wants us to focus on what he says. And that is the principle of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I, I think I, I evidence of things not seen. So because you don't see it, Mm -hmm. does not mean that it does not exist. Go ahead, Sister Love. No, when I'm, God, you know, a couple of times, you know, uh, our patriarch, he fumbled a lot, you know, but that's why God gave us the word so that we will not fall in the same. You know, you remember when, you know, he, the Abimelech, he said he was my sister because he was afraid. Uh, you know what I mean? So that, uh, in the, we're living in a world, you know, so, so that we, we all, if we're falling on that trap, we catch ourselves very quick. So we, we don't stay for too long and have to have to jump out of it. Like for example, 
Okay, God gives you. God says, this job is for you. You're going to tell them. Maybe mm -hmm. God said this job for you. Uh, you, you land the job. Oh, like maybe maybe for the past, what, maybe three years or whatever. You, oh, it was like hell. Like, you know, so, you know. And if you're not strong, you know, or uh, praying to God and being patient, you can just say, maybe it's not the will of God. Because it, it, it will happen. No, I'm just I'm telling you the example. Same thing with marriage. Maybe God you marry this person, okay, and this is God. But at the earlier on, if it was so rocky, you think maybe it, it was not so. So if you're not patient and believe in God's word, you could just check out on time and without having that materialize. Mm -hmm. This is real. So that we all we we were driving home. It, 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 it's not an easy I don't know. It's not an easy. If it's easy, then you know we gotta be tested. So, well, you know, it's not that it's easy or is it hard. It really had a lot to do with us focusing on what the word says. That is the issue. And as you say, we know that the word is in our spirit when it mm -hmm. is coming out of our mouths. We know that. All right. Now All right. let's let's go to to so so calling things that are not is really the principle the principle by which Abraham became fully persuaded that what God is saying is true. That is what happened. All right mm -hmm. now yeah. Romans four seventeen Paul said oh. that Abraham believed God. Okay. Right, who quickened the dead. God who quickeneth the dead. The word quickeneth the dead means give to give life. Mm. Right? And calleth things which be not as though they were. Right? Okay. Now that is what Paul wrote in, in Romans 4 17. And Paul was referring to Genesis chapter 17, where God mm -hmm. changed Abraham's name to Abraham. Okay. Right? And when he changed that name, right he gave him a name which meant father of nations or father of multitudes of people right mm. now this was the means that god used to teach abraham to call into reality to make things come to pass that god has spoken which he did not yet have in his possession that is why we were saying that when we pray we believe mm. that we receive what we prayed for at that time that is the that is the word of god that is the word from the manual mm. that we believe that we receive when we pray and we will have it if god cannot lie it is so and and we, we, we can't stop saying that if we believe that we receive something why are we going to ask for it again the only logical reason is because we have not gotten to the point where we believe that we receive when we pray so god has had established what he blessed abraham with with a promise now that's how god operates you know he gives us promises that he fulfills isn't that right Mm -hmm. and so Abraham had to call the promise into reality. And how was Abraham doing that? Abraham was calling the promise into reality by mixing God's word with faith. Now let us look at what, how that works. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. It says, I read for the in it just a time. It says, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear. Now, when you see that fear, it is talking about reverential fear. Let us be respectful of what God says. Let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Sure. Whenever we disrespect what God is saying, mm. we have to understand the consequences to that respect it is not different to respecting the electricity in your house Amen. all of that all of the wires are insulated right mm -hmm. 
so 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 the 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 the, the, the refrigerator wire is insulated that is why you can hold that insulated wire and plug it in without getting electrocuted right mm -hmm. if you strip the insulation off and you try uh -oh. to hold that wire with your mm -hmm. bare hand it's going to kill you mm -hmm. Why? Because you're showing disrespect for the rules and regulations of, of electricity. Mm -hmm. We can handle electricity, but only when it is insulated. If, if, if that wire is not insulated, we're going to have a problem. And that, that is respect. That word fear there is talking about respect, right? For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as them. Paul is talking about the gospel was preached to the children of Israel, just like it was preached to us. Because remember now that they were going to Canaan for, for a rest period, right? They were going, remember, why, why am I saying they were going there for a rest period? They're coming out of slavery, where they were working hard, very, very hard, and for no benefits whatsoever. And you know, God is really merciful. Do you know that when the children of Israel left Egypt, when Pharaoh took them out of their sister Vesper, with 400 plus years of slavery, do you know that all of the wealth that they accumulated, all of the wealth that the Egyptians accumulated, Sister Valerie, and mm -hmm. they left Egypt with those monies, you know? Mm. You understand what happened? They were able to borrow that money and live with it. God is, God is an incredible God. He does the impossible for his children, but we have to be open towards God's words. So, so in Hebrews we're reading, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard, and he's talking about the Israelites coming out of, Israel, out of Egypt, but the word they heard did not profit them. profit them. You see the word profit, how you make profit? They the word. This is an accounting term here. How you make profit <laughs> in the natural? By bal uh, investing and balancing. How do you make profit, uh, Sister uh, Alice? You're, you're, you're a business person. How do you make profit? You sell something for less than you buy it for? No, of course not. You no. make profit more than you Oh, sell. please tell me how <laughs> you make profit. <laughs> you're, more for, you're making more for what you sell. So exactly. So it says, so, so, so you, hear, you, see, you see what the Bible talks about profit? Yeah. But, the, but the word which they heard did not profit them. them. Yep. The word which we hear is supposed to bring us profit, Sister profit. Valerie Molyneux. Gain. Yes, yep. But Gain it is not God. going to bring us profit if it is not mixed mm -hmm. with, mixed with faith, faith in faith. those mm -hmm. who heard it. I am not making this up. Yep. Yeah, it is true. That's true. The word mm -hmm. of God. Well. I am not making it up. Hmm. As it's root, man. So, 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 Practice. so, what, what, what is happening here is that our prayer lives must be consistent with our ordinary conversations. Our prayer lives must be consistent <laughs> with our ordinary conversations. It is like we're praying all day. That is how we pray without ceasing. Because whatever we're talking about has virtue and value based on the word of God. Mm. That's why we don't gossip. That's why we don't slander. That's why whatever we do is to elevate and help people to come to a greater understanding of the power that God invested in them as a living soul. So our prayer lives must be consistent with our ordinary conversations. So we can't pray for one thing and oppose what we prayed for in, a, in our regular conversation. So what was happening here is that every time Abraham answered his name, 
Remember, Abraham's name was changed from Abram to Abraham. And this, this, this is what God did. So every time Abraham answered his name by saying, I am Abraham, he was calling things that were not yet manifested as though they were. Now, let's, let's look at Abraham. Abraham did not deny he was old enough. <laughs> this was this this was a hundred year old guy getting ready to have a baby with a ninety year old woman. Beautiful. Nothing is impossible with our faith, God, and nothing mm. is impossible to us when we use the faith that we get from hearing God. Yes. The only source of our faith is coming into our ears, into our spirit when we hear God speak. So every time Abraham heard his name, every time he heard his name, he go around saying, I am not old because I am Abraham. I am Abraham, father of nations. Every time he heard his name and he responded and saying, you are you looking for Abraham? I am Abraham. I'm the father of nations. Um, in, but, Brother Gerald, you have yeah. one question from Sister Angela in Texas. Okay. Unmute, Angela, go ahead. Unmute. Unmute, Angela, I still see you muted. Did you raise it by accident? We'll continue. Let us know. Okay, whenever you get on, that's all right. Just get okay, on. I'm okay, on now. Yes, you hear me? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay. Um, I was go well. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Hi, good afternoon. I'm yes. going to say that um, you were saying that Abraham. Were you saying that Abraham had faith in God because he was old and uh? God was going to grant them a child. Is, is that what you're saying? I couldn't understand. I didn't get it exactly. What you not, not, be, not because he was old, but God gave him a promise. God gave him a promise. Right. And that promise, that promise is being fulfilled now that he's old, not because he's old. What is, what is carrying the promise is who it came from. Right. It's where it came from. And Abraham, now God changed his name from Abraham, Abraham. From Abraham to Abraham. So his name becomes a confession of the promise. And you were saying that when we ask God for things, we should have faith that we're going to get it, right? And not no doubt, right? Well, we, we, we say that, but what does that mean? well i'm not sure exactly what it means because i know from time to time people waver even though they ask god for things they kind of waver and when you were talking about abraham even though he was this you know a man of god and everything he kind of wavered to me in the fact that even go even though god promised him that child he went off and did it on his own you know by having a child with the handmaiden yes and and all and all of that happened before he became abraham abraham okay that is when he was abram and that is part of the problem that you've just highlighted right there that we have somehow or the other we get this idea that if god makes a promise to us and god has made all of the promises in the bible is what he made to us God is not God is not a God who have favorites that he is going to offer you something that he does not offer me. That is why when I was a little kid and I believe that with all of my heart up to now that every promise in the book is mine. Every Amen. chapter, Amen. every verse, every line. I don't know if you guys know that song. I learned that in, <laughs> in, in Bible class, I guess when I was about four or five years old or maybe six maximum 
every promise in the book is mine and that is how mm -hmm. god operates he makes promises but those promises to be fulfilled in our lives are conditional they are based on us accepting what god says unconditionally mm. and as you said sister angela without wavering without going back and forth like the waves of the sea yes abram had a problem and abram tried to help god when he went to sarah and said sarah look at our ages you think god know what he's talking about that <laughs> we could have children at these ages Jesus. Mm. right but mm. abraham definitely could have still had children so sarah was very cooperative <laughs> sinful as it may and he gave abraham permission to sleep sleep with the maid mm. but she got jealous after well that that was going to follow because anything <laughs> outside God's love is jealousy. Mm. And God himself says, I am, I am a jealous God. You make me jealous when you go and do the things that cause you problems. When yeah. I have made a life for you that is full of solutions. So remind us again, the Abraham, Abram versus the Abraham, the two different people. A one... Abram got the promise. Yes. Okay. A and as sister, as, as sister Angela said, a Abram thought that it was yes. taking too long. Mm -hmm. So they came together and figured out how they would help God. And in the process of trying to help God, they hurt themselves. Yep. It is no different to what happened to Adam and Eve. If, yep. if you eat this fruit, you are going to become like God. How is it possible for the creature to become like the creator? Isn't that nonsense? Hmm. <laughs> well, it is the same situation that existed here. So God's method of helping abraham to change his mission was caused when he changed his name and abraham became persuaded you know you know what it means to become persuaded what does it mean to be persuaded somebody please please talk to me on the other end kind of like to be persuaded means what to become totally convinced, convinced. oh but to be in right totally convinced nothing is going to change your mind mm -hmm. nothing absolutely nothing is going to change your mind you are totally persuaded in your mind in your will right. and your emotions that this is what you're going to do so faith came to abraham faith came to abraham the same way that faith would come to us and how is that? It is by hearing what God said about him. That is how faith came to him. So just as Abraham, we also must call things which are not yet seen in the natural if we are to live in the reality of God's promise. We can say that we have been given what god says that he has promised Amen. because god uses unseen spiritual forces underline unseen and underline mm. spiritual we can't see anything in the spirit but god uses the unseen spiritual forces to overcome natural things so whatever natural thing is happening in our lives god can use unseen unseen we, we haven't we've never seen god mm. but we know he exists yeah we know he exists but he uses unseen spiritual forces to overcome natural things and, and if you look quickly and i'll read it first corinthians 1 27 and 28 says that god i'm paraphrasing now god hath chosen things which are not 
Could you imagine? God okay. has chosen mm -hmm. things. Well, if something is not, what does that mean? It's not. It's not the zero. <laughs> God has chosen things that are not to bring to nothing, to bring to naught things that are. Right? Whatever mm -hmm. it is, it might be a financial problem, it might be an illness in our body. Whatever it is, God has chosen things which are not, which are not, absolutely isn't there to bring to naught, to destroy things that are there. Hmm. But our part, our part, Sister Angeli, Sister Angela, is to speak what is true according to the word of God. That is our part. That is our part. We have no other part but to speak what is true according to God's word. Now, David, the psalmist David says in, in Psalms 116.10, listen to what he says. He says, first I believe, therefore have I spoken. Watch what you're speaking, because what you're speaking might be a contradiction to the word of God, but that is what you believe. Okay, then. So quoting David, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4.13, we, and I love this scripture, we have the same spirit of faith. We have the same spirit of faith. God is a faith, faith God. God speaks yes. spiritual words. Do you remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, I only say what my father say, right? And then he continues to say that what I am saying, the words that I am speaking, they are spirit and they are life. So we have the same spirit of faith according as it is written in the word of God. Mm. I believe, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. So we also believe and therefore speak. We believe and therefore speak. Now that process is significant. Because when it comes to divine healing, this is a vital principle. Mm. This is a vital principle. And that is what we started out hearing tonight about the word of God. Right? When it comes to divine healing, this is a vital principle. For God's word is life health and medicine to all of our flesh we read that in proverbs earlier on that was the scripture we started with god's word is life it is health and it is medicine medicine to all of our flesh mm -hmm. now psalms 107 20 i find very interesting as i was looking at at, at this evening's study and Psalms 107.20 tells us that God, pay attention here now, because sometimes mm. the adversary has a way to just trip us up with, with some little deviations, right? Mm -hmm. Psalms 107.20 tells us that God sent his word, he sent his word and healed yeah. them mm -hmm. and delivered them from their destructions. Notice that God sent his word to heal. I'm sorry, God did not send his word to heal. That is not what the scripture says. But he sent his word and healed. Mm -hmm. He sent his word and, and healed. healed did not send his word to heal he sent his word and healed now first peter to 24 listen to what he says and and this is this is the truth that it is saying that by the stripes of jesus we are healed let's so then so then so then look at our ages none of us here are 100 years old right when did jesus receive those stripes at 33 when how long ago how many years ago 
2,000 years ago. Over 2,000 years. Yes. And the word he sent was Jesus, and he healed us long before we were even thought about coming on the scene. Mm -hmm. The truth is that by <laughs> Jesus' stripes, we are healed. So our healing is a complete work as far as God's word is concerned. Amen. Thank you. So we must be fully persuaded of that truth and call on that truth to, to, to come to manifestation. Mm. So what are we saying? We're saying, Sister Valerie, that healing, healing is in our mouth. Mm. That's 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 what we're saying. Healing yep. is in our mouth. Now, one way, one way to administer God's medicine to our body, one way to administer the medicine, because remember we're talking about his word as a medicine to our flesh. All of us here have flesh, you know. That's why I can see you. <laughs> and there's bone, there's bone support in that flesh. Okay. So one way to administer God's medicine to our body is to keep God's word in our mouth. mouth. Listen to what Paul said about that. Paul said that the word is nigh us, is nigh you. Even in your mouth, Listen to, listen, to, listen, to, listen to the process here. Even in your mouth and in your heart. But instead of calling things that are not, instead of calling things that are not, the things that we don't want, most people make the mistake of calling the things that they have that they don't want. Mm -hmm. And by so doing, we hold on to those terrible circumstances. But the word is of God is making it very vividly clear how we can overpower the things in our lives with our mouths. Hmm. I, I, I have a story I want to share with you here about a lady right who had fever continually for several months and the doctors couldn't find out what was wrong couldn't find anything wrong with her physically and what they did one is that they questioned her thoroughly and discovered that when she got upset about anything at all she would mm. say oh that just burns me up mm. Mm. no wonder she has fever <laughs> burning back <laughs> so she used that phrase several times a day she got upset and that just burned me up so the doctors yeah. weren't sure if the phrase had anything to do with her condition or not not certain at all about that but they ask her because they hear her using the phrase and they ask her not to use the phrase that's the only help the doctor could have given her they had no medication because they couldn't find out anything physically wrong with her except they're hearing her saying even in the office oh that just burns me up mm. so they ask her huh? not to repeat mm. that phrase anymore and within weeks her body temperature became normal mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. wow. so let me ask you the question how many times have we said every time i eat this thing or that thing it makes me sick mm. oh i would Life hear people say oh my back is killing me <laughs> these kids make me nervous or you'll hear somebody say, boy, I am catching the flu. And I would always make a joke with them and say, well, why don't you let it go? Why are you catching it? Drop it. Don't catch it. Drop it. Learn behavior. See, our own words give instructions to our body. 
and our bodies are greatly influenced by our words words are spiritual forces you can't see them but they do great damage we used to hear people say when i was growing up which was so wrong that sticks and bones sticks and stones may break my bones but words won't do me any harm that's a lie from the pit of hell the entire universe was created by words mm. if you want to understand how powerful words are jesus walked up walked up to every sick person and spoke divine words of healing to them mm -hmm. words are important mm -hmm. so our words give instructions to our body and our bodies are going to be always influenced by the words i was sharing with you about the idea that our bodies are slaves and our bodies are supposed to take instructions from our new spirit man who is now priest and king and our soul with its mind will and emotions are servants so you got a servant you got the servant to serve you your soul and you have a slave that has the responsibility to take around your soul and your spirit man in good health got to speak to him sister Val. Oh. Amen. because when we say wrong things to our bodies when we speak the wrong things our in mm -hmm. entire immune system can get shut down and we saw scientists confirming mm. this and this comes straight from the word of god we will have what we say so god's method is to is for us to call for health even though in reality our bodies are not experiencing health so what is he saying let us speak to our body and call our bodies to be the way god say in his word he said Amen. that he sent his word and heal. heal us so it is by the stripes of jesus who was the word you know the bible said that the word became flesh it's talking about jesus in the beginning was that same word and the word became flesh and dwelt among us that word came and healed us so that by the stripes of jesus that word we yeah. are healed that is how god sees us hmm. sees us based on his word and he wants us to see ourselves based on his word so this is a way to exercise our god given authority over our body is to speak what god says about our bodies our bodies are healed so let us look at the application now of spiritual mess, me medicine we got to get serious about this because this is affecting us so to exercise our spiritual authority over our body god's word must be allowed to become a part of us hmm. right and this process of god's word becoming a part of us is called receiving the engrafted word receiving the engrafted word i don't know if any of you have ever seen grafted mango trees or have ever seen anybody graft a tree yes okay when what what did what is involved in the process of grafting trees or why do we graft trees or what are we doing when we say that we're grafting trees we are making two trees into one like taking a branch of one tree and attaching it to another tree mm -hmm. yeah Exactly. God wants us to take His word and do the thing, the same thing. Take His word and graft it to mm. ourselves. Okay. Okay. Right. Mm. The process Good. of receiving the grafted word, mm. the engrafted word, is the same thing. So you take another tree. 
because there's a you want you want a different fruit a better fruit whatever you're trying to accomplish and you take a branch from another tree and graft it into the other tree and it grows happens mm. with the word the very same way mm. is what our teaching is telling us tonight mm. so when we declare god's promises concerning our healing we are establishing God's truth, even though it is not yet a reality in our bodies. Mm. Now, this is not denying that sickness exists. Don't do that. That's not what we're doing. We're not this de denying that sickness is not that does not exist or that we're not sick when we're sick. But what we're doing is that we're denying sickness. Let me know. Mm. We're denying sickness the right the right to exist in our body right now just as we would take medicine you know we take medicine in our in our physical bodies to aid healing by 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 physical and natural means and there is nothing wrong with that so we must receive god's word concerning healing into our spirit for supernatural healing supernatural healing is different to natural healing what does that word supernatural have over natural let's think about that you have you have your natural healing methods that work and we have supernatural once the word comes into it it is supernatural let me give you an example of how the supernatural word works jesus is ministering to a multitude of people every place jesus went the multitudes follow him mm -hmm. right and they show up without food but they, but they, because 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 physical food did not mean as much to them as spirit food mm. so they showed up right and mm. at one particular time jesus looked at the crowd and he realized that those people where they have to go after they came and listened to his teaching they mm. can't make it home they're not they don't they, they they're too hungry they're too weak they can't they can't make it home Amazing. So Jesus called his disciples, <laughs> tell mm. his disciples, so feed them, mm. feed them, right? And the disciples said, but oh, oh, Jesus, what's wrong with you? Oh, we don't sure. feed them. <laughs> there are shops around here, number one. You, do, you have, do, you, do you know how much money it would cost to feed 5,000 men? Mm. And of course, you know, normally wherever church thing is happening is going to be more women. So if you if you got five thousand men, hmm. I'm sure you got twenty thousand women. That's right. <laughs> Double, triple. Okay. Jesus. So and and children. So mm -hmm. just imagine the enormous amount of people. Now, now, do you know what it would cost? Do you know what it would cost to feed? a group of people like that. You know how many container loads of food you would have to have stored up in the back somewhere? You know how many cooks you would need? Mm. Just stop and think about that. You know how many cooks? You know how many stoves? Mm. You know what would, be in, what would be involved to prepare meals, Sister Vesper, for 20,000 people? Just 5,000 men alone tells me that that crowd is bigger than 20,000. Look at, look, but, but, but in order for that to happen, Sister Val, you, you naturally, naturally it could be done. <laughs> right? Because all you have to do is to get container loads of food, get hundreds, thousands of cooks, hundreds of cooks, and it could be done naturally. But Jesus is saying to them feed them it can't be telling them to feed them naturally how on earth are they going to arrange for all of these mm. containers of food to come for all of these cooks to come so it had to be supernatural my god and look at how he does it he he mm. circumvented all of that stuff and took five loaves and two fish from a little boy mm. Bless you. gave god thanks for it mm. broke it 
and gave it to these disciples, sell the disciples, put them to sit in groups of 50s. And I could see those disciples, like some of us, freaking out. What is Jesus talking about? Put them in groups of 50s to sit with five loaves and two fish. And I asked Jesus, what is five loaves and two fish among all of these people? Which is a natural question to answer. Yes. Ask. There yes. is nothing yes. wrong with asking natural questions. Mm -hmm. But Jesus had supernatural solution. Amen. So he said, put them to sit on the break, Miss Brethren. And Sister Valerie, everybody mm -hmm. ate. No container show up with food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no bunch of cooks cook any food. And what happened? And I'm going to yeah. end here. I just realized it's 9 or 3. And what happened? Everybody got, got fed. And when they were finished, 12 the baskets food. were left. Each hmm. disciple had a full basket for themselves. For, for leftovers. Oh, one one, yeah. one basket full for each. Glory, glory, glory. And what were they what were they carrying in that mm. basket? Supernatural mm. food that just fed all of these people. Mm. We're gonna pick it up here from next week because it's 903. But let me tell you something. There is something that has happened to all of us on this line that is gonna manifest in reality. And it can only happen through the word of God. Amen. Your sister Valerie. Yes. Amen. What a Amen. word. We must call things that are not as though they were. Mm. Amen. And we will have what we say. Say the word of God. Say the word of God. We wanna um we didn't get a chance to greet Sister Glenda. We've missed you. Sister Yolando from St. Thomas. Sister Judith from St. Thomas is with us. Sister Angela from Houston. Sister Shelly Ann is back with us, and Sister Christiana is with us. Um, so I just wanted to make mention these these sisters are also with us, and whatever brothers are sitting around listening, we bless them as well. Um, if you have your elements, Sister Christiana from St. Thomas is with us, and so we're going to ask her to pray a blessing on the broken body. Offering God thanks for sending His Son and the blood that was shed and she will also dismiss us god bless you all thank you mm -hmm. i'm mute for sister christiana whenever you're ready take it away okay could you hear me now now we can yes god bless okay. you thank you um I'm reading from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 19. Mm -hmm. When the hour came, he reclined in a at a table and the apostles with him. Then he said unto them, I have fer fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before mm -hmm. I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a, no, I'll, I'll go on further. And he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if you have your element, would you take your bread and let us eat? Thank you, Jesus. In the same manner, in the same way he also took the cup after supper and said this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you but look the hand of the one betraying me is in the table with me Let mm -hmm. it, um for this the son of man will go away as it has been done determined but what to the man by whom he has be, is betrayed. So if we have our drink, may we drink. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for 
this your son jesus christ we thank you because you alone knows us you know mm. us every here and our head tonight god we thank you that we could come into yes, your presence god. lord there's no condition except we have to accept and listen to the word and speak the word that you are mm. who you are there's no reason god that you should lie god never lies he promised all the things that he promises he gives unto us we thank you for today we're not asking you today for anything god we just want to thank you for everything thank all you things father. we have to thank you for um that tongue would not be able to tell as we study your word tonight we thank you for the word and for brother joel and all who's on the line tonight we give you Jesus. thanks we give you praise father there is none like you there is yes. none like you god we thank you for healing our bodies we thank mm -hmm. you for saving our souls we thank mm -hmm. you because you're god all by yourself you need no help hallelujah. even though sometimes, hallelujah even though sometimes we want to help but god you do, you need no help mm. thank you for taking such good care of us thank you for providing for us and making a way out of no way as we leave and go to our beds tonight we ask you that you will cover us we will cover us with your precious blood yes God. we have everyone tonight lord that are on the line bless them in a mark and a special way their families lord. we ask you that you will continue to bless us and keep amen. us in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. again reminder if you're in the boston area we are moving our fellowship time together to either the eighth or the 9th of october please send um your the date that you're available sister val and i will get back to you as to which of those dates the majority can do it we'll be meeting at the webs home either the 8th or the 9th for time of fellowship food and laughter god bless you all stay well amen amen good night, everybody good night, good night. everyone good night. Good night.